listening to Ghost Chat Radio. I am your host, Jason Stanton, the Paranormal Rebel. Um, we got a great show for you tonight. Sadly, Jody Smith, the uh, diva, will not be uh, <coughs> attending this afternoon because she's got some family issues, which is all right. So, you know, I told her I said, "Take care of your mom." You know, so hopefully she's okay, and I'm I'm pretty sure she's doing all right. But again, uh, I, I did wind up getting a, a filling co-host for the night. So I am pleased to announce uh, the first time ever to co-host with me, Wheelchair Dawn. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, come on, like Sexy Dawn, Hot Bitch Dawn, Wheelchair Dawn. Well, if anyone knew how I got that name, I guess it would be more sexy. It would be funny as hell. I've I've co-hosted with you before. Have you? I think so. You have, oh, the memory of a, a, you have the memory of a, a snail, so, you know. I do, I do. <laughs> I know you've been on the show before, but I don't think you ever co-hosted. Maybe maybe you co-hosted, I don't know. Well, anyway, the point being is that you're so lucky to have me. I am, I am. I'm blessed with your, your presence. <laughs> you are, you certainly are. <laughs> but it's all good. Um, tonight, we do have a wonderful guest. We have... Uh, Ron, I hope I'm going to pronounce his last name right. If not, he's more than welcome to kick my ass. Uh, Ron Mil- Milione, is that how it's pronounced? Hey, close enough. I'll still kick your butt. <laughs> <laughs> is it Milione or Milione? You could, well, we'll go in between. How about, how about Milione? <laughs> no, you guys are good. You guys are good. You got it. Mil- Milione, I like that. It sounds very... Very European. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's awesome. it's good. And uh, when I hear you, you can only stay on for an hour, right? And then you got to get off. You got some things to take care of, right? Yeah, we got some um, some stuff happening. Um, probably like seven o'clock tonight, so I got to be on a conference call at ten. But I yeah. will. Um, I, I could definitely come back and do another full two hours. Um, no, no problem. Okay. Again. We'll make the best of it. It's all good. We'll make the best of it either way. So we'll just skip the, the, the paranormal news for the night, and we'll get right into it, I guess. I think that sounds like cool. a plan. What do you think, Don? Uh, no, uh, Ron, my question for you is, well, I'm Don, by the way. Um, yes, so I, it's nice to meet you. She's with her, Don. She's with her, Don. Now, where are you from? I was reading a little bit about you. You sound like you're from New York, maybe? Yeah, born and raised and actually in the Big Apple. So in New York City, been here from uh, the uh, output of birth to the present day. (laughs) (laughs) I do love that New York um, accent. Oh, you do? Yes, you do. Okay. I do. I, I you gotta love a good solid New York accent or a Boston accent. John and John gets I, turned on by that shit, so here here I sit right smack in the middle of New York City and Boston and I was not blessed with either or. You are. So Oh that's okay. Mm. Except for snow. <laughs> oh, that's good. Now so my question, Ron, is it, it looks like you went from doing uh, ghost hunting and ghost hunters to mm-hmm. is, or do you do mostly like UFO now? Well, it's, um, if you kind of, I kind of roll it back a little bit. I actually was oh. as a kid more into. UFO was more real as far as stories back when I was a kid than than say ghost hunting. So in other words, a lot of media way back was um, some you know prominent cases when I was a little kid. I barely remember a couple mm-hmm. of cases, but I mean they were you know news uh, the Associated Press, which is um, was the newspaper for across the country back then mm-hmm. uh, about. Oh, I remember that. Special, you know, special sightings and stuff. So um, that was really my first interest in the paranormal was 
uh, as a kid be inspired by these, you know, like really like cool, uh, you know, stories. And at that time, mm-hmm. it was quite a bit of quite a bit of science fiction on television. So it kind of a, it was kind of kind of cool, like being spooked on a Saturday night watching some, you know, The Outer Limits or some other show, and then actually oh, hearing sick. about some case somewhere <laughs> and go, wow, this is this stuff that could be really real, you know, because. If the, mm-hmm. you know, if it's real enough on TV. I said it might be, you know, someone's really experiencing, uh, you know, uh, in some part of this country in the world. So that's kind of more of the beginning. It's mostly into uh, UFOlogy. Ghost mm-hmm. at that time was you really it wasn't really making any press. There was no, like really no press as it is, you know, more sub- substantial today. But back then, now the only thing that hit the headlines were. Um, both of you, you know, special um, UFO sightings, because that's when um, Project Blue Book was active with the Air Force. So they took stuff seriously, and they would publish, you know, certain cases and stuff. So it was like a real, like a serious investigation. Not like, you know, today, which is kind of a, you know, everyone's got Photoshop and everything else, and uh, you you, you just can't believe what you can see now in video, especially on, you know, between YouTube and everything else. You don't know what's true, what's not true anymore. I mean, if there was a real story behind it. Well, that's uh, true, and I mean, it bothers uh, me for someone like... Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Dwayne. Sorry. Well, I, I'm just thinking, like, my myself, I grew up, um, you know, without going into the story, I did psychic work when I was a little kid. I mean, so it was always in my face. I had no choice but to believe in it. Um, you know, but we go from that to the UFO thing. And now as an adult, I mean, I, I, I'm a firm believer in UFOs, and I mean, I'm you know, I know <clears throat> you still have a lot of people that, you know, um, mm-hmm. don't want to believe in it. But people have, like, really ruined it, you know, all this, uh, as you said, all the Photoshopping and all the YouTube stuff. It's it's yeah, really, all like, the CGI. kind of... Mm-hmm. All the CGI, yep, exactly. It's just kind of made a mockery out of it for... And it's just hard for, you know, when you're really, really interested... And you really believe in that, and then when you're sure, you know you're trying to tell people and and um, deal with them, they they take it more of a as a joke. Yeah, if you look at it this way, um, mm-hmm. if you take all the modern tools away, such as smartphones and everything else, you know, at your fingertips, and you go back to more classical, more classic. Uh, you know, type of uh, basic technology, you know, where basically you just had television and radio and you had, Mm -hmm. you know, basic cameras, um, (laughs) Polaroid, let's say, and eight millimeter, (laughs) that it's it's a lot more hard to fabricate or or make up, you know, really you know, eye candy stuff that looks really good, impressive of with today's stuff, but back then mm-hmm. you really can't. It's much it's much more much harder challenge because you don't have the tools, you know, to, to do the artificial yeah. creation behind the scene. So the stories yeah, back true. then a lot a lot more believable because it's much harder. It was limited tool sets. So basically, I mean the only computer around was like, you know, an old tape system that was worth, you know, thirty, forty million dollars that only the government would use. You know, uh, you mm-hmm. lucky people just had basic black and white TV, never mind color television back then. And, you know, you're lucky to get maybe one camera per neighborhood. So, you know, mostly it was eyewitness accounts and sketching. People would sketch what they would see. And then, and then under you know interrogation, um, their stories would be you know really really you know like uh, believable. So I mean, there's some really great stories in the, you know in the fifties and the sixties that I mean, first of all there was 
there's no means to make any monetary gains because there is no you can't disseminate data that quickly like you do today. You know, you can't there's nothing mm-hmm. viral back then. There's no means of no means of transmitting this stuff viral. You only could go to a local newspaper if they pick up that story. And by the time that thing gets gets around the the neighborhood then eventually to another state, it could be a couple of days later. You know, it could be a week later when some local paper in California picks up the story. So what I'm saying is people back then there there's no there's no monetary gain by fabricating or creating something. Um and it, they didn't want to go through the trouble. So you might have a couple of cases, of course they're like, oh, you know, this this was man made but the, the, some of the people and some of the um, pilots back then, I mean, you know, the stories are, you know, you take it from the door here and you go, you know, there is some substance to what they saw, what they observed, and, you know, what they recorded, you know, and what documentation they wrote down, and there's as much as detail as possible. So that's why it's a lot more looking back classically, you know, classic cases, uh, more substance than present day. Someone said, "Hey, I saw something land, <laughs> you know, in the field," uh, and, uh, and I even got a video capture of it. And, and we would never even say, in a hurry, "Oh yeah, let's go really analyze it." Like, yeah, okay, when I get around to, we'll take a look at that. Sounds like a good, sounds yeah. like a good bar joke, you know, for a weekend or something. Yeah. So. Um, you know, that's you got to kind of look at it that way because I mean, people just ask, "Well, look at all the stuff we got today. What, what can we prove or disprove? We get so much technology." Mm-hmm. Then I, you know, then you kind of go, "Well, that's a good question. That comes not as prominent as it was back then. Um, yeah. Like, what changed? What changed in the last thirty, forty years that then we're not being highly visited as we were back in the fifties and sixties and late forties? You know, uh, then I could well, say no. Back then, I could, yeah, the uh, the aliens people, uh, that's they're, they're pretty smart and they know about smartphones and all that, so they're trying to avoid you today as they did years ago because you can't capture them, you know, with any handheld device. <laughs> right. You know, it's kind do, of a conversation a, piece right here, but do you have any favorite governmental conspiracies involving aliens? Um, what, what, what's your thought on the, um, sorry, I forget his name, the thing that came out, uh, last week, the, um, leader of Russia that wants to, when they have the, um, the meeting in Switzerland where all, all the heads of state and everyone meets and he's threatening to, you know, basically Obama, if you don't tell, you know, the Americans what mm-hmm. we know and what we have. Well, I mean, what is your thought on that? Well, I mean, are you in Trump agreement card. with them? See, the, I mean, um, it's interesting. It's interesting to note that there's, there's a couple people that I knew um, that were um, very highly technical specialists in certain areas um, that were asked by the government to look at certain type of certain type of ship. Put it that way. Um, they it's probably like I could have said it's like the top five chemists in, in the world, and he actually lives he lives here in the city of New York. Actually, he's a resident, but uh, from another acquaintance, he's in uh, he's in a medical business, big medical has a big medical practice, but he, he basically runs the business. He runs he runs all these different practices, uh, even though he's a he's a PhD chemist. But he actually worked in trying to re-engineer some, some ship from the government that had. Basically, he told me he could make heads or tails out of this structure, this alloy, or anything. That's what he could tell me. So you have conversations with a person like that that I was introduced to, and you trace it back. Now, again, it's a trump card. So in other words, who, if something was, um, they were able to capture it by accident, they happen to you know happen to have a mechanical breakdown, and they happen to come into a local area somewhere, maybe in New Mexico, or well, the Russians has got something similar in 1890, 1900. It's kind of a trump card. Now, whoever whoever can really prove that, yeah, we do have possession of some, 
you know, um, really unsolvable technology, 